In this demonstration, I'll show you how to sketch a graph of a function using strictly calculus, and this is part three of the series. In part one and in part two, we learned important information about this function. We used the first derivative test, the second derivative test. We learned when it's concave up, when it's concave down. And we're going to put all that information together to sketch what this might look like. The first thing that you want to do is state the domain. Now, since any input of x will produce an output, the domain is x, which includes all real numbers. The next important thing that you should do is to find the y-intercept. And we know that the y-intercept will occur when x is equal to 0. 2 times 0 to the power of 3, that leads to nothing. Minus 3 times 0 to the power of 2, once again, that goes to nothing. Minus 12x times 0, and that also leads to nothing. So the y-intercept is equal to 0. Now we also learned in part one that the function was increasing from negative infinity to negative one. And it was also increasing from two to positive infinity. So let's just state that. And between negative one and two, the function was decreasing. In part two of this video, we also learned that there was a local maximum at x is equal to negative one, and there was a local minimum at x is equal to positive two. And we use the second derivative test to find that. Now, one thing that we did not state in part one and part two was the point of inflection, and that's somewhat important when it comes to sketching this. Since the critical number for the second derivative was x is equal to half, and, and it was concave down, which I'll denote as cd, when x was less than half, and then when x was greater than half, it was concave up, we can state that the point of inflection, which is the turning point essentially, will occur at half. So the point of inflection, POI, is half. So let's start off by stating some of these important points. We know that the y-intercept here is 0. We know that there's going to be a local maximum at x is equal to negative 1. So we can find the corresponding y to that. And let's do that. The function was this. And what we're going to do is evaluate what happens at x is equal to negative 1. So 2 times negative 1 is equal to positive 7. So our local maximum will occur at negative 1 and positive 7. Now our graph, I'll change it just a little bit. I'll call this part 7. And right here will be a local max. And similarly, I'll find out the I'll find out the y value for the local minimum, which will give us negative 20. So let's state that as well. At positive 2, you'll get negative 20. I'll just alter these. So here you would get 2 and negative 20. So we can assume that this point is going to dip down through 0 and 0, make its way to this point. In addition, we also know that the function increases from negative infinity to negative 1. So if we were to create a smooth line here from negative infinity, so anything coming from this end, would eventually make its way up to here. And it is decreasing from negative 1 and 2, which was shown right here. And once again, it is increasing from 2 to infinity. Furthermore, 
it is concave down when you're less than half. So let's show half right there. X is equal to half. It is going to be concave down when it's less than half and it appears to be concave down. It is concave up when it is greater than half. And as you can tell, it just continues to grow beyond this point. And that's it. That's how to use calculus to find clues on how to sketch a function. If you found this tutorial helpful, please support our channel by subscribing or by liking this video. If you have any further questions, you may visit our website at biology-forums.com. We are an online service for students seeking free homework help. See you soon.